Solutions, and welcome to What You See is What You Get on the Harris T1 and IP multiplexers. Model number designations are ACS-163 and NX-300 for NetExpress. We'll also focus on Synchrocast, Harris's automatic GPS-aligned audio delay in this session. I wish you could get there to be in your shop or in your location personally. Unfortunately, that's not always possible, so I hope that, hoping this video allows me to show you the product itself and give you some feel for what the product can actually can do. You can download the data sheets, manuals, and application notes of these products from www.simulcastsolutions.com. And without further ado, we'll now talk about the product itself. We are now going to talk about Interplex T1 and IP multiplexers with automatic delay change compensation. These are manufactured by Harris Corporation. The broadcast division is based out of Mason, Ohio. We'll start off with, first of all, general information on the multiplexer, then overview Synchrocast, Harris's automatic simulcast control, then talk a little bit about some of the individual voice modules you can get to create any kind of system that you want. The multiplexer shelf itself is known as ACS-163, Access Cross Connect Server. It's a time division multiplexer that has a T1 output, 24 DS0s. Each DS0 is 64K a piece, plus the 8K of overhead audio to get the 1.54 megabit per second data rate. These multiplexers are very stable and also have robust framing so they avoid frame slips if in fact something in the system loses lock. These shelves also support full redundancy with dual power supplies, dual channel modules, and dual module adapter cards. This is a terminal version of the multiplexer. There's also a drop and insert version of the multiplexer. And that drop and insert version will actually interface to up to six DS, up to six T1s, and let you groom any and all the DS zeros in those six T1s. It can be powered from 115 230 volts AC. There's also a 24 volt and a 48 volt DC power options to this. There's an IP version which looks very similar, referred to as NetExpress. The model number is NX. 300. Instead of a T1 output, it has an IP output out the back, and it can also be used for regular traffic as well as simulcast traffic because it creates a virtual T1 pipe through the local area network. Synchrocast, which is what's used to delay the audio in the system, delays the entire T1. What that means is you can use inexpensive voice modules to carry the simulcast traffic, you don't have to use expensive modules in order to get the system around, the traffic around. Because it takes a input from GPS, a one pulse per second, that allows it to automatically figure the path length from the head end, the particular transmit site, and put the appropriate value in the delay buffer okay, so the audio launches at the correct time. This is useful in case loop microwave gets rerouted in the opposite direction, or if you get a telco T1 that's rerouted through an entirely different path. The simulcast system stays up. It takes about five seconds for it to notice that there has been a change, to verify there has been a change, and to compensate for it. How it works is that you're actually feeding this shelf itself with a 10 megahertz and a one pulse per second, it generates all the appropriate signals and sends them around the network. This has been used in hundreds of simulcast systems, hundreds of land mobile simulcast systems, and many other broadcast radio simulcast systems over the last decade and a half. If we move to our voice card part of the discussion, power supply module is behind the plastic piece that stays in place. You can have two modules. The next module is the T1 interface module, a Synchrocast module 
which is what actually does the brains for the system itself, and you put one or more voice modules. Voice modules typically have four circuits per card. There are 64K voice circuits, PCM circuits, that are relatively inexpensive. There are also AD PCM circuits that only take 32 kilobits. That's very useful if you are using a compressed, uh, excuse me, using a sub-rate microwave and need to have compressed audio in order to fit enough audio through. There are also, there's also a brand new wideband audio card that goes from 5 hertz to 3000 hertz that's very useful in case you want to send the CTCSS tone down the, through the links, or the DPL, or D digital CTCSS, or the low-speed trunking data. That's what this module was created for, was actually the low-speed trunking data, okay, instead of generating it at each of the sites by the GPS on time point. There are also IP modules, there are data modules for, for sending around RS-232, as well as synchronous data modules for sending synchronous RS-232 data, which is also known in the industry occasionally as V.24. So the modules plug in the front, and you can plug in a number of modules. The shelf itself does have a mid-plane as opposed to a back-plane. So the back of the shelf itself has the power connectors for DC or AC, depending on which power you select. It has a module adapter, which allows you to connect to the T1 or the IP to feed it. A module adapter for the Synchrocast control module, and module adapters for the various voice channel modules you're using in a circuit in the system. This happens to be a 50-pin telephone connector. The other module adapter you can get is, in fact, four RJs for the voice circuits. This concludes our tour of the, module, the multiplexer itself. What I'll now do is tell you a little bit about Harris Corporation that manufactures these. Harris purchased Interplex in 1999. Interplex had been, had been manufacturing these multiplexes for about five or seven years prior to the acquisition by Harris. It was originally designed as a broadcast radio tool and has been applied to Land Mobile for the last 15 years. This is part of the broadcast division of Harris Corporation. If you need technical support on this product, your best bet is to contact tech support at harris.com. Thank you.